And the first hypothesis which we are going to study is the nebular hypothesis, the most common one. Okay? So the nebular hypothesis was given by Kant and Laplace. Okay? So it was put forward by Kant. He was a German philosopher in 1755 and Laplace. He was a French mathematician in 1796. So this hypothesis actually suggests that the sun and planets including the earth of course. Earth is a part of, uh, part of the planets. That's why the sun, the earth, the planets, they're formed from a disk shaped rotating nebula. There was a vast cloud of hot gases. So when you say that these, the solar system in the sun, the planets, they were formed of a hot, vast, disk shaped gaseous cloud which was called as nebula. So this nebula was actually so hot, so large and gaseous. So it was rotating. This nebula was actually rotating along its own axis. Fine. It was rotating. Now what happened when this uh, nebula was rotating after some times, uh, uh, it started cooling down. You know, you know, it's it started radiating its energy, and due to this, it started cooling down. Now, as to conserve the angular momentum, as to conserve the angular momentum, it actually increased its speed. Fine. Once again, let's have a look. If if you're still confused, that originally there was a hot hot large gaseous nebula so originally it was not disc shaped here it's there's only a gaseous shaped shaped hot and gaseous nebula right now it it rotated along its axis now as the gas lost energy by radiation it became cooler as a result the nebula contracted inwards now what happened when you know it's it's very simple logic here very simple science that whenever anything is hot whenever the gases are hot have any hot gaseous thing it actually has a tendency to expand but whenever it cools down it contracts inwards so the same happened with the nebula so when the gases actually started radiating out the energy it cooled down and due to this it started contracting inwards okay so at the beginning it was something like this then when it cooled down it started contracting all right now in order to conserve the angular momentum it started you know rotating in a very high speed it increased its speed so as to conserve the angular momentum due to this the centrifugal force in the equatorial zone also increased and thereby causing the nebula to bulge out in the equatorial zone what happened when the speed of this nebula increased the centrifugal force around the equatorial zone in a ring like shape near the equatorial zone it increased fine now when the centrifugal force increased it created a bulge around here so due to this bulge it became uh, a disc like shaped fine why because here uh, the centrifugal force was trying to create a bulge whereas here i mean in these places there was a contracting inward gravitational force acting which was contracting it inwards and here this force which was actually creating a bulge this was centrifugal force now what happened this cooling and contraction of the nebula continued okay so continuously this cooling 
and then the contracting of the nebula was taking place and ultimately a stage came when the centrifugal force when this centrifugal force became greater than the gravitational force this gravitational force which was actually contracting the and attracting the nebula inwards so as a result a gaseous ring was separated out now have a look there was a gaseous nebula at the beginning okay this hot gaseous nebula was there okay hot and gaseous now what happened it started radiating its energy energy and cooled down due to this the nebula started contracting inwards the nebula started contracting inwards and now in order to conserve the angular momentum the speed of rotation increased all right now what happened due to this increased speed the centrifugal force in equatorial region increased which created a bulge and this disk type of shape was formed c disk shaped now ultimately what happened these this continuation of uh, contraction and cooling took place now what happened a uh, finally a stage came when the centrifugal force became greater than the gravitational force which was acting inwards i mean which was attracting this uh, whole mass of nebula inwards fine so when the centrifugal force was uh, became greater what happened you know a ring shaped gaseous uh, i mean the gaseous ring was separated out from the nebula like this is the nebula and a gaseous ring separated out gaseous ring separated out now this separation of rings continued and like this so many other rings were also formed now what happened so many other rings were also formed so there was a left mass of nebula in between and so many other rings were formed now when these gaseous rings actually condensed they formed your planets fine and there were also some rings which after condensation they actually broke in fragments and they formed planetoids all right and the left mass of nebula which was there in the center after some times it, it also cooled down and formed the sun i mean cooled down doesn't mean the sun is cool but it was before uh, you know it was very hot it was all in a gaseous state now it took a proper shape that's what i'm saying it formed the sun the other condensed rings formed the planets those rings which actually broke down into fragments they they formed the planetoids right now have a look at here in the diagram at first what was there a hot gaseous cloud okay which was rotating it uh, after some times it actually actually started you know uh, increasing its speed when it started cooling down and started contracting inwards now uh, the shape of uh, i mean the speed of rotation increased as the speed of rotation increased the centrifugal force the centrifugal force 
around the uh, equatorial region it increased and a bulge took place and after us after some times when the centrifugal force became greater than the gravitational force acting inward the ring started separating out and when these rings after uh, at the end condensed they formed planets and the broken rings they formed planetoids and whatever mass was left at the center part from the nebula it became our sun so see all the planets evolved during the evolution of the sun itself that's why you call nebular hypothesis as an example of the evolutional theory fine so with this we have completed one hypothesis of the origin of the earth origin of solar system that is nebular hypothesis now we'll move on to the planetesimal hypothesis Thank you.